The low hum of the engine and the rhythmic whir of tires accompanied our journey through the sprawling countryside of Missouri. My three friends, Mike, Sarah, and Alex, and I were on our way to a weekend getaway, our laughter echoing within the confines of the car. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting an orange glow across the vast fields that stretched as far as the eye could see. As the day waned, we found ourselves veering off the main highway onto a narrow road, curiosity guiding our impromptu detour. The landscape transformed into a tableau of dilapidated barns and desolate fields, the only signs of life being the occasional rusted mailbox that marked the entrance to hidden homesteads. Our journey led us to a forgotten hamlet, a place seemingly untouched by time. Wooden shanties leaned wearily against each other, their windows dark and uninviting. A sense of desolation hung in the air, and the distant howl of a lone coyote added an eerie soundtrack to our explorations. As we meandered through the quiet streets, our headlights revealed a flickering oasis in the form of a rundown gas station. The neon sign overhead struggled to spell out Burt's fuel and supply, its erratic illumination casting an unsteady glow on the worn pavement. Despite the station's worn appearance, a sense of relief washed over us. We pulled up to the weathered pumps, and the creaking sound of the car door hinges echoed through the stillness as we stepped onto the uneven concrete. Inside, the air was thick with the scent of stale grease and decades-old cigarette smoke. The flickering fluorescent lights overhead cast a sickly pallor on the cracked linoleum floor. Behind the counter, an ancient cash register sat as a testament to a bygone era. A bell chimed as we entered, announcing our presence to the unseen patrons of this forgotten establishment. The clerk, an elderly man with a wiry beard, greeted us with a toothless smile that hinted at a lifetime spent amid these crumbling walls. Evening, folks. What brings you to this neck of the woods? He croaked, his voice a raspy symphony of decades-long conversations. Just passing through, Mike replied, eyeing the shelves stocked with expired snacks and dusty trinkets. As we explored the dimly lit aisles, our eyes fell upon a trail of smeared blood leading to the restroom at the back. The stark contrast of crimson against the faded tiles sent a shiver down our spines. A heavy silence settled over us, broken only by the intermittent hum of the flickering lights overhead. We exchanged uneasy glances, silently debating the course of action. Should we check it out? Sarah whispered, her voice barely audible over the uneasy quiet. Alex, ever the skeptic, chuckled nervously. Probably just some critter that got itself in a bind. Nothing to worry about. But the unease lingered. It clung to the air like a spectral fog, making the decision to ignore the ominous trail of blood an arduous one. The debate unfolded in hushed tones, our rational minds clashing with the instinctual fear that gripped us in the depths of this forgotten gas station. In the end, curiosity bested caution, and we reluctantly approached the restroom door. The creaking hinges echoed our trepidation as we pushed it open, revealing a scene that blurred the line between nightmare and reality. Inside, the flickering light exposed a grisly tableau, a grimy sink stained with dried blood, a shattered mirror reflecting fractured images, and a solitary toilet with a broken seat. A guttural sound emanated from the darkest corner, where a mangy cat licked its paws, indifferent to our intrusion. Relief washed over us like a tidal wave, laughter bubbling up as we realized the source of the blood was nothing more than a stray feline with an unfortunate injury. The gas station's secrets, it seemed, were nothing more than the mundane aftermath of rural life. Yet, as we left the dimly lit restroom, a shadow danced in the corner of our vision, a fleeting silhouette that seemed to vanish with each glance. The clerk, oblivious to our discovery, continued to stare into the void, his toothless grin undisturbed by the mundane revelation we had unraveled. Back outside, the night air carried an uneasy chill. The flickering neon sign overhead spelled out the name of this forsaken outpost, a place where the echoes of a bygone era lingered like ghosts among the rusting pumps. As we departed, the headlights cast long shadows across the vacant fields, and the old gas station disappeared in the rearview mirror, swallowed once more by the silent expanse of the Missouri countryside. The mysteries of Bert's fuel and supply, though revealed in the cold light of day, left us with a lingering sense of unease, an awareness that sometimes, in the forgotten corners of the world, the line between the mundane and the macabre is thinner than one dares to believe. Let's hop on to story number two, but before I begin reading, make sure that you have subscribed to Mr. Scare for regular horror podcasts.
The low hum of the engine and the rhythmic whir of tires accompanied our journey through the forsaken backroads of West Virginia. The moon hung low in the night sky, casting an ethereal glow on the dense forest that enveloped us. My friends, Tom, Jess, and Alex, and I, seeking a taste of teenage rebellion, embarked on a quest to unearth the mysteries shrouding an abandoned gas station rumored to be cursed. Rumors whispered through the small town of Glenwood spoke of the station's eerie past, a place where strange occurrences transpired under the cloak of darkness. Local legend had it that the old gas station was a portal to a realm beyond, a place where the living mingled with the unknown. As our car pulled into the overgrown lot, the rusty sign creaked ominously in the wind, barely holding on to its hinges. The gas pumps stood like silent sentinels, witnesses to a bygone era of prosperity that had long since abandoned this forsaken outpost. This is it, guys, Tom declared, his voice tinged with a mix of excitement and trepidation. The infamous Glenwood gas and go. The headlights illuminated the peeling paint and cracked windows, revealing a building frozen in time. Broken glass crunched beneath our sneakers as we approached the entrance, our footsteps reverberating through the night like a prelude to the unknown. Inside, the air was thick with dust, and the scent of mildew hung in the stagnant atmosphere. Shattered beer bottles and discarded graffiti hinted at the clandestine gatherings that had taken place within these decaying walls. Let's play a game, Alex suggested, a mischievous gleam in his eyes. Something to make this adventure memorable. His proposal ignited a spark of excitement among us, and soon we found ourselves huddled in the dimly lit interior, ready to engage in a daredevil game that promised to unravel the station's secrets. The rules were simple, take turns drawing cards from a makeshift deck, each card bearing a challenge more audacious than the last. The anticipation heightened with each draw, the air thickening with a sense of foreboding that none of us dared acknowledge. Jess, with a nervous laugh, drew the first card. Spend five minutes alone in the storage room, it read, her eyes widening as she glanced toward the darkened corridor leading to the back of the station. I got this, she declared, feigning bravado as she disappeared into the shadows. As the minutes ticked away, a palpable tension settled over the group. The creaking of the floorboards and distant rustlings played tricks on our senses, amplifying the eerie ambience within the abandoned station. When Jess emerged, her face was ashen, and her gaze darted nervously around the room. She refused to speak of what transpired in the storage room, leaving us to ponder the nature of her silent terror. The game continued, each draw escalating the stakes. Touch the broken mirror in the restroom, read one card. Stand atop the roof for ten minutes, commanded another. The challenges pushed the boundaries of our courage, forcing us to confront the unsettling reality of our chosen playground. With each passing dare, the atmosphere grew thicker, an unseen force coiling around us like a serpent waiting to strike. Tom, drawing a card that instructed him to navigate the maze of shattered glass in the adjacent room, stumbled over broken shards, his uneasy laughter masking a growing unease. As the night wore on, a collective paranoia settled over the group. Shadows danced at the periphery of our vision, and the flickering overhead lights seemed to flicker with malevolence. The gas station, once a backdrop to teenage rebellion, transformed into an arena where our deepest fears took center stage. The final draw fell to me. I hesitated for a moment, my fingers brushing against the worn cards. The air hung heavy with expectation as I drew the last challenge, a card that bore a single word, written in bold letters, confess. A hushed silence enveloped the room as my friends stared at me, their expressions a mix of curiosity and trepidation. Confess what? Alex asked, his voice barely audible over the rhythmic hum of the wind outside. But the sinister presence lurking within the station needed no clarification. As I opened my mouth, the air seemed to congeal, and the dim lights flickered in rhythm with my hesitant words. I confess. I confess that we've awakened something here, I stammered, my gaze darting between the anxious faces of my friends. Something that thrives on our fears, on the secrets we hide even from ourselves. The realization struck us like a bolt of lightning. Our audacious game had not only breached the boundaries of the mundane but had torn open a portal to a malevolent force that now encircled us with tendrils of dread. The shadows, once mere illusions, solidified into grotesque shapes that slithered across the walls. Whispers echoed in the silence, each syllable carrying the weight of a suppressed terror. In unison, we fled the cursed gas station, our footsteps pounding against the cracked pavement as we sought refuge in the safety of our car. 
The engine roared to life, the tires squealing as we sped away from the malevolent force that lingered within the abandoned outpost. As we left the haunted grounds of Glenwood Gas and Go, the wind carried away our nervous laughter, leaving behind a chilling truth. We had trespassed into the realm of the unknown, awakening a sinister force that would forever linger in the recesses of our memories, a reminder that some mysteries are best left undisturbed. The sun dipped below the horizon as our family cruised down the seemingly endless stretch of highway en route to Grandma's house. With two restless children in tow, my wife and I decided to make a pit stop at a well-lit gas station that emerged like an oasis in the desert of darkness. The neon glow of the station's sign promised respite, and the hum of tires on pavement softened as we pulled into the bustling lot. Laughter from the adjacent playground echoed, and the inviting aroma of freshly brewed coffee wafted through the air. We'll make this quick, okay? I assured my wife as we unbuckled the kids from their car seats. Inside, the fluorescent lights cast an artificial brilliance that felt both comforting and sterile. The kids made a beeline for the candy aisle, their eyes widening at the colorful array of sweets. My wife headed toward the restroom with our youngest, leaving me to wrangle our energetic eldest. As we strolled through the narrow aisles, the soft chime of the entrance bell signaled the arrival of another patron, a man of average build with a friendly smile that bordered on the edge of unsettling. His eyes, a piercing blue, seemed to hold a secret knowledge that extended beyond the mundane. Evening, folks, he greeted, his voice carrying an uncanny warmth. Beautiful family you've got there. I offered a polite smile, my unease masked by societal conventions. Thank you. Just passing through on our way to visit family. The man's gaze lingered on the children, a solemnity coloring his expression. Be cautious on your journey, he warned cryptically. There's something out there, preying on families like yours. A malevolent force that senses the bonds between loved ones. I raised an eyebrow, my skepticism surfacing. What are you talking about? Some kind of highway robber? He shook his head, the lines on his face deepening. Not a robber, friend. It's ancient, a force that feeds on the strength of familial ties. Be vigilant, and protect what matters most. Before I could press for further explanation, my wife emerged from the restroom, our toddler in tow. The mysterious stranger offered a nod and a faint smile before disappearing into the aisles, leaving us to ponder the bizarre encounter. As we resumed our journey, the gas station dwindled in the rearview mirror, the neon lights fading into the black expanse of the night. The kids dozed off in the back seat, their dreams untouched by the ominous warning we had received. Hours passed in a monotonous rhythm until a distant glow on the horizon signaled another gas station, beckoning us to stop for fuel and a final restroom break before reaching Grandma's house. The new station mirrored the previous one, a carbon copy oasis in the nocturnal desert. We parked by the well-lit entrance, and as we stepped out, a familiar voice called out from the shadows. Mind if I share a few words? The man from before emerged, his presence sending a shiver down my spine. What are you doing here? I demanded, my patience waning. He sighed, the weight of ages evident in his eyes. I've seen the threads of fate intertwining, and I'm compelled to ensure your family's safety. The entity I spoke of, it's drawn to places like this, where families gather in unsuspecting harmony. My wife's hand tightened around mine, and the children clung to our legs, their innocence unknowingly shielding them from the intangible threat. Stay close to each other, the man urged. Protect the love you share, for it's your greatest defense. With those cryptic words, he retreated into the shadows, leaving us in the eerie glow of the gas station's lights. The air hung heavy with an unspoken understanding, and the playground, once bustling with children, now stood empty. As we entered the convenience store, the friendly cashier offered a reassuring smile, unaware of the strange encounter unfolding in the night. My wife shot me a glance, her silent inquiry mirrored in my own uncertainty. The restroom door creaked open, and the kids rushed inside, eager to escape the gravity of the situation. My wife and I exchanged a knowing look, the weight of the man's words pressing upon us. The restroom, despite its sterile cleanliness, felt like a sanctuary within the peculiar circumstances. As the children finished, we gathered them close, the sound of their laughter momentarily dispelling the unease that clung to the air. Exiting the restroom, we found the gas station eerily deserted. 
The cashier's station stood empty, and the playground, once vibrant with life, now seemed frozen in time. Let's make this quick, I whispered to my wife, my gaze darting nervously around the deserted station. As we approached the car, the man re-emerged from the shadows, his countenance marked by urgency. It's close, he warned. Protect your family, for it senses the bonds. You share. I nodded solemnly, a knot tightening in my stomach. The children, oblivious to the unfolding drama, chatted animatedly in the back seat. With the gas tank replenished, we climbed back into the car, the man's eyes lingering on us with a mix of concern and determination. The engine roared to life, and as we pulled away from the forsaken gas station, the playground swing swayed gently in the breeze, whispering secrets carried on the night wind. The road stretched ahead, and with each passing mile, the man's warning echoed in my mind. We navigated the highway with heightened vigilance, the family bonds we shared transforming into an invisible shield against the unseen threat. As dawn painted the sky with hues of pink and gold, we reached Grandma's house, the tension of the night slowly dissipating. The kids bounded out of the car, their laughter signaling the return to normalcy. Weeks passed, and the gas station incident faded into the recesses of memory. Yet, a subtle shift occurred within our family, a newfound appreciation for the intangible threads that bound us together. Whether the man's warning was a harbinger of a supernatural force or a cautionary tale woven into the fabric of folklore, I couldn't be certain. But as we gathered for dinner at Grandma's house, the warmth of family enveloped us, a powerful antidote to the lingering unease of that fateful night. And so, life resumed its course, with the gas station incident becoming a haunting tale shared among family members, a reminder that the road of life is fraught with mysterious encounters, and the bonds we forge may be our greatest defense against the shadows that lurk in the periphery of our existence. Amidst the vast expanse of the Midwest's night sky, my car cruised through the desolation of the empty plains. Miles stretched between towns, and the only company I had was the low hum of the engine and the rhythmic whir of tires on the deserted highway. Glancing at the flickering fuel gauge, I realized I needed to find a gas station soon. The desolation outside mirrored the quiet intimacy inside the car, where my girlfriend, Sarah, and I shared stories and laughter, oblivious to the vast emptiness surrounding us. As the fuel gauge flirted dangerously close to empty, the neon glow of a distant gas station sign became our beacon of hope. Pulling into the station, the cracked pavement crunched beneath our tires, and the glow of the flickering fluorescent lights cast an eerie ambience over the scene. The sole attendant on duty, a middle-aged man with tired eyes and a worn-out uniform, emerged from the station's dimly lit interior. His gaze fixed on us with an intensity that transcended normal curiosity, sending a chill down my spine. Evening, I greeted, attempting to shake off the uneasy feeling that had settled in the pit of my stomach. He responded with a silent nod, his lips forming a thin line that seemed to conceal a multitude of untold stories. Sarah and I exchanged a glance, a subtle acknowledgement that we shared the unspoken unease about the strange ambience permeating the place. As I began to pump gas, Sarah went inside to grab a few snacks. The mechanical whir of the pump became the backdrop to an unsettling silence that hung heavy in the air. I stole glances at the attendant, who stood motionless, his eyes unwaveringly fixed on us. Sarah returned with a handful of snacks, a forced smile concealing the unease mirrored in her eyes. The attendant's gaze followed her every move as she walked back to the car, intensifying the uncomfortable atmosphere that had settled over the gas station. I finished pumping gas and replaced the nozzle, but the uneasy feeling persisted. As I approached the car, I noticed the attendant's lips moving, forming words that barely reached my ears. The words seemed like an incantation, a string of incomprehensible whispers that sent a shiver down my spine. Did you hear that? I asked Sarah, attempting to mask my growing unease with a casual tone. She nodded, her eyes wide with a mixture of curiosity and trepidation. The attendant's whispers ceased as we entered the car, but his watchful gaze lingered, an invisible thread connecting us to the mysterious happenings of that desolate gas station. As we pulled away, the flickering lights of the gas station diminished in the rearview mirror, but the sense of unease lingered like a ghost in the car. I couldn't shake the feeling that we had stumbled upon something beyond our understanding, something that defied the logic of the well-traveled roads we thought we knew. Miles passed in a tense silence, broken only by the occasional flicker of the dashboard lights. 
the landscape outside morphed into an inky black void, with only the glow of the car's headlights cutting through the darkness. An unspoken agreement lingered between us, acknowledging the need to put distance between ourselves and that peculiar gas station. The rhythmic thud of the tires on the highway became a hypnotic soundtrack, lulling us into a false sense of security. That sense shattered when, in the distance, the neon glow of another gas station emerged like a spectral mirage. Reluctantly, I pulled into the dimly lit station, the unsettling memories of the previous encounter still fresh in our minds. The pump clunk to life, and as I began to fill the tank, Sarah went inside to use the restroom. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the mechanical sounds of the gas pump. As I glanced around, I noticed a familiar figure standing near the edge of the lot, the attendant from the previous station. A cold sweat broke out on my forehead as I watched him, realizing that this couldn't be a mere coincidence. The intensity of his gaze had followed us to this new place, and the air grew thick with an unspoken threat. Sarah returned from the restroom, her eyes widening as she noticed the attendant. Without exchanging words, we knew that we had to leave, escape the gravitational pull of these strange encounters that seemed to transcend the boundaries of the deserted highways. As we sped away from the second gas station, the neon glow disappeared behind us, but the sense of being watched lingered like a phantom presence. Questions flooded our minds, each more perplexing than the last. Who was that attendant? What did those whispered words mean? And why did it feel like we had stumbled upon something far more sinister than a mere pit stop on a desolate highway? The miles stretched ahead, the darkness enveloping us once again. The rhythmic thud of the tires and the low hum of the engine became a symphony of uncertainty, each mile carrying us further from the strange gas stations, but closer to an unsettling truth that lurked in the shadows of the open road. The tires of my car crunched on the gravel as I pulled into the gas station, its existence seemingly forgotten by the world. The air was thick with silence, and the only sound that accompanied me was the low hum of my engine. The flickering fluorescent lights above cast eerie shadows, painting the abandoned station with an otherworldly ambience. It was well past midnight, and the darkness outside felt like a shroud, enveloping the gas station in a cocoon of mystery. I could barely make out the faded sign that hinted at a brand long gone, its colors weathered and its letters barely holding onto the surface. The gas pump looked ancient, a relic of a bygone era. I hesitated for a moment, contemplating whether I should continue to the next town with a more modern station. But the fuel gauge pleaded with me, and the desolation of the surroundings left me feeling a peculiar sense of obligation to this forsaken place. As I filled my tank, the only sound was the mechanical clunking of the pump. The flickering lights cast long, dancing shadows that played tricks on my eyes. The air held a strange scent, a mix of gasoline and something else, something unsettling. Curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to explore the gas station's surroundings. The convenience store windows were covered in a thick layer of grime, hiding whatever secrets lay within. As I approached the entrance, the rusty door let out a protesting creak, echoing in the stillness of the night. The interior was frozen in time, as if the world had abruptly stopped turning. Shelves lined with dusty products stood in silent testimony to a past era, their expiration dates long faded into obscurity. The air inside was stale, and my footsteps echoed through the empty aisles. Behind the counter, a row of ancient candy bars sat undisturbed, their wrappers yellowed and cracked. A flickering overhead light created a strobe effect, casting intermittent shadows that seemed to dance in the corners of my vision. My eyes were drawn to a bulletin board covered in yellowed newspaper clippings and handwritten notes. As I scanned the articles, a story began to unfold, a tale of an unsolved disappearance that had gripped the town years ago. The gas station had been the last known location of the missing person, and the mystery had never been unraveled. My heartbeat quickened as I continued to read, each word adding a layer of dread to the already ominous atmosphere. The abandoned gas station was not just a relic of the past, it was a graveyard of forgotten stories, each haunting the decaying walls with its unanswered questions. A sudden noise interrupted my thoughts, a soft, almost imperceptible whisper that seemed to emanate from the darkest corner of the room. I strained to listen, the hair on the back of my neck standing on end. The whisper grew into a murmur, and soon, I could make out distinct words, spoken in a hushed and malevolent tone. The cryptic messages painted a picture of despair, of something that lingered in the shadows, unseen but undeniably present. 
The words hinted at a malevolent force that had made this forsaken gas station its home. A force that had witnessed the secrets of those who passed through its doors and chose to share them in the dead of night. Fear clawed at the edges of my consciousness, urging me to flee, but a morbid curiosity rooted me in place. The whispers continued, revealing tales of desperation, of lost souls trapped in a limbo between the living and the dead. It was a symphony of sorrow, a chorus of voices that begged to be heard. As the whispers reached a fevered pitch, the flickering lights above began to pulse in synchrony. Shadows danced on the walls, coalescing into shapes that seemed to writhe with an otherworldly energy. The air itself felt charged with an unseen malevolence, and I became acutely aware that I was not alone in that forsaken gas station. With a surge of courage born from desperation, I turned to leave, but the door refused to budge. Panic set in as I realized that I was trapped, ensnared in the clutches of whatever unseen force inhabited this desolate place. The whispers intensified, the cryptic messages becoming more urgent. They spoke of a ritual, of a way to free the trapped souls that haunted the gas station. As the instructions unfolded, I felt a cold dread settling in the pit of my stomach. I was no longer a mere observer, I was an unwitting participant in a dark and twisted ceremony. The flickering lights reached a crescendo, casting a pulsating glow that seemed to transcend the boundaries of the gas station's walls. Shadows twisted and contorted, merging into a form that stood before me, an entity born from the tales of sorrow and despair. Its eyes, pools of infinite darkness, bore into my very soul. It spoke without words, a voiceless communication that conveyed an ancient longing, a plea for release. In that moment, I understood that the gas station was a purgatorial space, a realm where the echoes of lost souls reverberated through time. As I followed the whispered instructions, a surreal dance unfolded, a macabre ballet of shadows and flickering lights. With each step, I could sense the energy in the room shifting, the unseen force drawing upon the ritual to bridge the gap between the living and the dead. The air crackled with an otherworldly energy as the ritual neared its conclusion. The entity before me seemed to waver, its form dissipating like smoke in the wind. The whispers, now softened, carried an air of gratitude, as if the trapped souls had found solace in the dark dance we had performed. The door, once immovable, swung open with an eerie creak. The night air rushed in, carrying with it a sense of liberation. I stepped into the darkness outside, the gas station fading into the rearview mirror like a haunting memory. The road stretched ahead, a ribbon of uncertainty illuminated by the glow of my headlights. The echoes of the gas station's whispers lingered, a reminder that the unseen forces that shape our world are as ancient and enigmatic as the shadows themselves. The low hum of the engine and the rhythmic whir of tires accompanied me as I drove into the night, leaving behind the forsaken gas station and the secrets it held within its crumbling walls. Yet, the cryptic messages and unsettling whispers continued to echo in my mind, a haunting reminder that some mysteries are better left undisturbed in the desolate corners of the American landscape.